All right, guys, welcome to today's uh, video. Um, it is the Frosty from Tato. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I went ahead and inspected the crankshaft on the N54, making sure that the journals were not oboled and had not, they didn't have excessive wear and they were still within spec. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys real quick how I did that. Okay. If you guys remember from the last video, uh, I was talking how I recently thought I had rod knock. Um, so, that's why I tore the motor apart and trying to figure out what was wrong with it. I guess um, uh, the rod variants look fine, but either way, I already took them off. So they are gonna be getting replaced. Um, just before I order new bearings, I do wanna mic the uh, crankshaft, make sure that the rod journal bearings, uh, the rod journals are still round and not egg-shaped because they can get uh, egg-shaped over time. And also, I wanna make sure that within spec, and in case any of them are a little more worn out than the other, I can compensate it with a different bearing size. And if there's way too out of spec or egg shape, I will have to pull the crank out and get it reground and polished. So I'm gonna start off with cylinder one and work my way back. We're actually cylinder one and then cylinder six as they're both up right now. Um, I'm gonna be using a micrometer. Uh, my usual micrometer says usually will come with uh, uh, these pins, which are to um, calibrate them. So make sure to calibrate your micrometer before you use it. It's really important to always calibrate your micrometer. So before anything, I will use a microfiber towel to clean it up a little bit. Um, make sure you're not leaving anything behind on the journal. Try to clean it up as much as you can. Also wipe this down. And then what I like to use, I like to use a little bit of oil just to protect the crank from actually getting scratched in case you use a little bit too much uh, force while I'm making it. Also, I like to put a dab of oil on the micrometer itself. And these journals are almost two inches, so I am using a one to two inch uh, micrometer, and I'm gonna back it out almost all the way out. There I am at uh, two inches even. So I'm gonna start off like this, and when you're checking your uh, rod journals, you wanna check them uh, horizontally and vertically. So you're gonna be checking from 12 to six o'clock and from three to nine, just to compare um, the wear at when the piss is moving up and also your lateral to make sure that they're not egg shaped. So I'm gonna start off like this, put it in here and using the small knob on the top of the micrometer, start slowly going down until start feeling some resistance. Okay, so right there make sure the side to side you don't you shouldn't have any place side to side when you're miking it and it should have a little bit a tiny bit of resistance not much you don't want to scratch it so right there so bam right there i got the 12 to 12 to six o'clock measurement and okay so i got um here you guys can see it what i got So pretty much it's one inch and then I'm on 900 thousands and then you're gonna look at the small slashes and then finally at the number you have on the actual dial over here. So by looking at this, let me count the lines, 25, 50, 75, so 50. So right here looks like one inch, 970 thousands. So one inch, 900 you got two full lines so it's gonna be 50 and then 20 so 50 plus 20 that's 70 thousands and then you have your 900 thousands so one inch 970 thousands is the measurement of this uh, journal um, from position 12 to 6 o'clock so I'm gonna go ahead and write it down real quick and then I'll be back and I'll be measuring the 6 or 3 o'clock so I spin the crank a little bit. Um, be careful whenever you're, make sure that your crank is not hitting other connecting rods or anything. But I spin it enough so where I can check um, the other measurement. So right now I'm gonna be checking the three to nine o'clock position. So let's see. Okay, yeah, so like always, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil just cause the oil will drop off. I do not want to damage this crank. So there okay let's see what's the best way all right so perfect the areas like that it's going to be in a slight angle but that's because i already spun the crank a little bit 
so it might look like it's not straight but uh, it is on the straight on the crank so I got this measurement back it's really close it's right between the 19 and 20 so it's right in between 1 inch 900 and 69 thousands and 1 inch 970 thousands so I'm just going to round it up to 20 since that was the exact measurement that we got on the other um on the other measurement which was 12 to 6 o'clock so we know that this this journal itself one, journal one out of six is not egg shape and all i have to do now is just make sure that there is measurements within spec and then i'll be able to order the appropriate size bearing for this one so now pretty much what i gotta do i gotta do the same thing to all the other five so the next one i'll be doing is going to be this one right here as this is the one that's also up and then after this one, I'm going to move on to these two middle ones. Then finally, I'm going to do um, two and five. So yeah, I'll probably just have a time lapse of me doing the rest of them. And then once I'm done and I have all the measurements, I'll show you guys what the measurements I got and compare them to um, OEM spec and see if they're within spec. And then I'll show you guys what bearings I'm going to be ordering for this application. So I got the measurements done for all six cylinders already. Um, you guys can see right here, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And I got 12 to six o'clock and three to nine o'clock. And I got some pretty good measurements actually. So I got cylinder one, uh, exact same thing. So I know this one's not egg shaped at all. Uh, really then all of them are within 1000. Uh, I didn't get any measurement over 970 thousands or lower than 969 thousands so i mean this one was uh, 1000 off right here 1000 off uh but i mean the rest were dead on so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna um, have to check my laptop real quick uh see what the specifications are uh, bmw typically would use different size cranks uh like by colors typically like three different color cranks so i'm gonna have to check what color my crank is and then compare that these measurements onto the color of crank that i have from there i can see which bearings i have to order so yeah uh looks like like my crank is healthy uh, i'm gonna do these i'm gonna change these measurements probably over to um metric or just get the metric measurements and change it off the standard so then compare real quickly so yeah i'm gonna look that up real quick and i was kind of having uh problems finding uh in exact specs for my crankshaft i wanted to see where the OEM specs were in clearances and tolerances were for my um, rod journals. I couldn't find anything um, on this technical spec sheet or literally anywhere online. Uh, so I'll be keeping digging a little bit more, trying to see if I can find an exact spec before I actually go ahead and purchase bearings. Um, but yeah, I used this website before. It's pretty helpful when you're trying to find uh, clearance and stuff like that for other motors. And with I had great success. I couldn't find anything for the N54 so my best thing i could think of was to go right over to fcp euro uh, where i ordered quite a bit of parts from and usually on their notes they'll have their sizing for their um, bearings for the journal size and you can see this is a bearing as the violet but for literally for every other color they have they have the exact same measurement which is 50 millimeters so when you transfer 50 millimeters over to uh, uh, centered you get one inch nine thousand six hundred and eighty five um, ten thousands which is pretty close to what I got I am only five uh, ten thousands um, in some cases and in other places is a uh, one uh, thousand which is um, pretty small like um, difference so typically I would feel comfortable with this uh, differences it's pretty close from one each other so what I think I'm gonna order, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and order standard size bearings. Um, I'm right now. I'm currently thinking about ordering uh, King bearings, which you can find them on ECS Tuning, eBay, and a few other uh, places. So I think these are the bearings I'm gonna go order, hit and order standard size. Uh, I think they should be just fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and order them tonight. Hopefully get them within um, a few days or possibly a week and a half. 
um, check the clearances, make sure clearances are good, and install them and start assembling the back of the motor. So I'll show you guys when I get the bearings, and I'm still gonna I'm still gonna plastic gauge them to make sure I have uh, my clearances. If I can find uh, specific clearances for M54, I'm just gonna get it based off of other clearances from other motors that I assembled before, or just any other BMW uh, motors in general. So yeah, um, I'll keep you guys updated on this, and I'm gonna go ahead and order these. That's gonna be it for today's episode. Um, hopefully, I was able to help you guys. If you guys need to um, check out a crank of your own, or you guys are rebuilding an N54 of your own, um, I will have an update once I get the bearings, and I actually install them and I plastic gauge them to see what my clearances were. Hopefully, I'll be able to find something today or tomorrow. I'll uh, be doing a little more digging around, trying to find some uh, specs. So yeah, guys, um, thanks for watching. It's made it to the end. Really appreciate you guys for that. Go ahead and subscribe if you guys like to stay up to date on the N54 build. And once again, thanks for watching.